Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be combining Activity 3-2 and Activity 3-3 from the MCSE MCSA Guide to Microsoft Windows Server 2012 Administration. This is in preparation of Exam 70-411. And both of these activities relate to the initial setup of a DFS namespace on a domain. So I decided to kind of combine them together. Um, in the first activity, 3-2, you're installing the DFS namespace and DFS replication role services. Um, I've already done that just because it's a little time consuming. I wanted to keep this short if possible. Um, so you should be familiar with the add and remove roles and all of that. So for namespaces, we're going to be adding um, a file and storage service. And under the file and iSCSI services, we're going to be looking at these two roles specifically. So on your primary server, in this case it's my domain controller, my first server, we're going to install both roles, DFS namespaces and DFS replication. Um, this namespaces role is going to be on the server that's actually hosting the namespace. Um, so we install both on our primary server, but on our secondary server we only install replication. And we'll take a quick look at that once this comes up. And so this is my secondary server, which will be replicating data, files, folders, all of that, but it won't be hosting my namespaces. My namespaces will be hosted on my primary server. All right, so that's the first half of 3-2. The second half is just to create shared folders. So I'm going to run through that really quickly. So on our primary server, we want a marketing docs folder. And we want to share that with everyone. We want to make sure that they have read permissions only. We don't want them to be able to write at this point. So we create the share, and we can see, we can see the share has been created there. And so that is on our primary server. On our second server, we're going to create another share. And this is going to be, sorry, counting docs. And we're going to do the same thing. Share with everyone. But they only have read permissions. Okay. So that's activity 3-2. Um, the roles are installed and those two shares have been created. Um, so moving into activity 3-3, where we're actually going to create the domain-based namespace. We want to get back onto our primary server and open our DFS management. I already have it open here. And this is where we're really getting into creating and configuring the namespace itself. So we want to start by creating a new namespace. And the server will be 411 server 1, which is my primary server, it's the name for my primary server. And I'll just call this all shares. And so this is going to be the path, sort of, that network users can access these various shared resources. Um, if you want, you can take a look at the settings. Um, so you can set up default permissions. I'm going to leave all of these um, as original defaults. And the next thing we need to determine is if this is a domain-based namespace, which for the purpose of this video it will be. The alternative is a standalone namespace. Um, so a standalone namespace would be in a network environment where maybe you don't have Active Directory installed. Um, so that's perfectly fine to do it that way. Um, standalone namespaces are a little bit trickier later on if you ever need to move a namespace from one server to another. Um, you may end up having to completely rebuild it and transfer the data manually or something. Whereas the domain-based namespace, we can see that it's accessed through the domain share rather than off of the server itself. So in a domain-based environment, if I ever need to retire this server, all I do is make sure that I have replication enabled and transfer all the data, make sure the data is replicated and propagated over to the other server. Then I can take this one offline, 
there's a few steps to getting to the point where you could remove this from the network safely without causing any problems. But it's a lot easier to do it that way because all the data is already backed up to another server and so it can still be accessed on the domain through that second server. Um, so again, for the purpose of this video, we're going to be doing this as a domain-based namespace because I have Active Directory installed, and we'll continue. Um, we'll go ahead and tell it to create the namespace. We get a success, which is good. Next, we want to go ahead and take a look at that namespace, and we see that there really isn't anything in here except the default first site pointing at this server. So I have those two shared folders, but they haven't been added to the namespace yet. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so we're going to, you can, I believe you can right click and do a new folder on the left side of the panel. Um, you can do a new folder over here, however you want to get there. And so adding the folder to the namespace here, the name will be how your users will access it on the network. Um, so for example, on my primary server I had a folder called marketing docs, but I don't really want my users to see that. I want them to see marketing. So that way they'll access it here. And now we need to target that specific folder. And since it's right here on this server, it's really easy to navigate to it, and there it is. So we'll go ahead and give it the OK, and we see that that namespace has been created for that shared folder. I think if we expand it, we can see it there as well. And so there's the actual path, but our users can get there here, slash marketing. Um, there's a few different ways they can get into it depending on how deep in to our shared folders they want to go. Um, but this makes it a lot easier to um, use group policy to either send shortcuts to their desktops or maybe map it as a network drive, something like that. Um, so we have our first folder, which is our marketing folder on this server, set up in our namespace. Next, we want to add in the accounting folder from our other server into the same namespace. So we're going to do the same thing, new folder. The name for this will be accounting. We want to add a target folder. We will type... Sorry, rather we're going to hit browse because we want to look at a different server. So let's go here, change it over to look to that other server. check the names, make sure it can find that server, and there we go. And there's our accounting docs folder, shared folder. So we'll hit OK on it and get it added into the same namespace. So we can see that we have the actual direct paths, but our namespace lets us set it up so it's a little bit easier to manage, and we'll get into management in future videos but it's also a little bit easier to look at for and look through for your users. Um, for example, to see how your users would find it. One thing you can do, um, I know on Windows, I think 8 and above, where you don't have your start menu unless you manually go and install it. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. You can do it through a file explorer, folder explorer. Um, we want to do backslash backslash 411 domain 1 so this way I'm targeting the domain network rather than a specific server and all shares and so there are my two shared folders via the namespace because I believe that I could also get there this way, which is going to get me into the exact same folder, the marketing folder. But again, that doesn't look as good, it's not as smooth, and it's a lot harder to manage. Well, maybe not a lot harder, but it is a little bit harder at least to manage without the namespace. 
And so there it is. Um, so we have it all set up. Um, my next couple of videos will hopefully get into a little bit of the management side, setting quotas, um, managing how replication takes place. Uh, but in any case, that's all for this particular video. Um, as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to leave them for me below. And hopefully I'll see you in my next video.